Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make birria tacos. I got a lot of requests to do this video and man, I am so glad I did. These tacos were absolutely amazing. They were so delicious. I'm super excited to show you guys how I made these, so let's get started with the video. We're gonna begin by preparing our ingredients. First, dice one large onion, or two small onions. When you're finished, set your diced onions to the side. Next, chop up some cilantro. Remove the leaves from the stem. Bunch them all together and then begin chopping them into tiny pieces. When you're finished, set your cilantro to the side. Now we're going to shred some mozzarella cheese. I shredded about half the mozzarella cheese, so when you're finished, place your shredded mozzarella cheese in a Ziploc bag and place it in the fridge. Next, place three guajillo chilies, one pasillo chili, and one ancho chili onto a cutting board. Then remove the stem and the seed from all of your chilies. I tried using a knife to do this, but it was way too difficult, so I just used scissors. It was way easier to cut the stem off and to cut the chili open to remove the seeds. By the way, when I was cutting open the chilies, I would just pour the seeds into a little bowl, you know, to reduce the mess. When you finish removing the stem and the seeds from your chilies, go to the sink and rinse them off. When you finish rinsing off your chilies, go ahead and place them into a pot of water. Bring the pot to a boil, then remove it from the heat. Let the chili stew in the hot water for about 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes are up, place your chilies into a blender. Then add one chipotle pepper in adobo sauce, and one cup of water. Blend everything together until smooth. When your mixture has finished blending, set it to the side. Now we're going to brown our beef shanks. Add some olive oil to a pan over medium high heat. I used my iron skillet, but you can use any large pan you have on hand. Place your meat on the pan and let it brown on both sides within a minute or so. We're only browning it, so it doesn't really need to cook that long. Plus, since it's on high, we don't want to burn our meat either. 
about 30 seconds on each side. I'm cooking around three pounds of beef shanks. Oh, and you can also use chuck roast if you can't find any beef shanks. When you finish browning your meat, place it in your instant pot or your crock pot. Then add half of your diced onions from before. Then pour your chili mixture through a strainer into the pot. Now add two tablespoons of beef bouillon powder, two bay leaves, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of thyme, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of ground clover, one teaspoon of salt, Three tablespoons of minced garlic. One chopped or diced carrot. A half a teaspoon of pepper. One fourth teaspoon of sugar. One fourth teaspoon of smoked paprika. One fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And four cups of water. Now just place your instant pot on the meat and stew setting and let it cook. If you have a crock pot, set it on high and cook it for about four to six hours. All right, so a quick note, when your food is cooking, seal the ventilation and then when it's finished cooking, let it out. But when you let it out, use some tongs or something to grab it with because the steam is really hot and it comes out quickly. Now that everything is finished cooking, take your meat out of the pot. Remove the bone from the meat and then start chopping your beef. This is the part um, of the video where I found a butcher knife and just started hacking at the meat because I saw someone do that in another video and I wanted to do it too. I know this looks very wild, but I am just chopping the meat. Swear. When you're finished chopping your beef, we're going to place uh, a good, I don't know, about half, half, not half. How much did I add? We're going to add some of our meat back into our broth. Around half, um, leave enough meat behind so you have enough for your tacos.
Make sure to taste your broth and add any additional seasonings if needed. Mine needed a bit more salt. Skim the fat from the top of your broth and place it inside a bowl. Once you're finished with that, combine some of your leftover diced onions and some of your cilantro in a small bowl and mix it all together. We'll be using this combination for our tacos. Next, in a large pan over medium heat, add a spoonful of your rendered fat onto the pan. Then add your corn tortilla. Make sure both sides are well coated in the rendered fat. You could always just dip it in the rendered fat instead, but this was easier for me since my corn tortillas were a bit on the fragile side. So every time I tried to dip them, they would rip apart. Let your tortilla cook for about a minute and then add your cheese. beef, cilantro and onion, and a bit more cheese. Then just fold your taco. I also flipped my taco so both sides were cooked pretty well. Once both sides of your taco are nice and crispy, go ahead and take it off the heat and set it to the side. Repeat this process until you've made your desired amount of tacos. Now that we've finished making our tacos, we can go ahead and plate everything up. Pour some of your broth into a bowl. Add your tacos and broth to a plate. Then add some limes on your plate as well. Lime with the tacos tastes delicious. I added more meat on top of the broth. Then I added some onions and cilantro. I also added some onions and cilantro on top of my tacos. And this is the finished result. Like I said before, these tacos were absolutely delicious. I love them. I even made them again for lunch the next day. My mom really liked them as well. After I finished filming, she ate all the tacos from this video. The recipes I used for this video were Simply Mama Cooks and Views by the Road, so I'll have their videos linked in the description below. These tacos are really good. I totally recommend making them. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious birria tacos on the stove. I will also be teaching you how to make a birria burrito. So let's get started with the video. Begin by prepping your ingredients. Start by chopping two onions. When you're finished, set your onion to the side. Then chop up some fresh cilantro.
When you finish topping your cilantro, set it to the side. Then remove the stem and seeds from three wahilo chilies, one ancho chili, and one pasilla chili. When you're finished, rinse your chilies off and set them to the side. Next, shred some mozzarella cheese. When you're finished, put your mozzarella cheese in a Ziploc bag and place into the fridge to use later. Next, cut up around 3 pounds of boneless chuck roast into chunks. When you're finished, place your meat into a large pot. Then add your onion. You can either dice it or keep it whole. One carrot. I had to switch to a different pot because I realized the other one was too small. Then add two bay leaves, one tablespoon or one packet of beef bouillon powder, one teaspoon of salt, two to three tablespoons of minced garlic, which I forgot to film me adding, and about one to two quarts of water. You'll wanna add enough water to cover your meat. By the way, add more water than this. I ended up adding more water later, but uh, I'm just telling you this now. Now bring your pot to a boil. Let it boil over medium high heat for about two hours. 30 minutes before the two hours is up, take one cup of the broth from the pot and set it to the side. While your meat is cooking, we're going to cook our chilies. Add your chilies in a pot of water and then bring it to a boil. Once it is boiling, take it off the heat and then let your chilies stew for about 30 minutes to an hour. However, if you don't want to cook it separately, you can always just place your chilies in the pot to cook with the meat and then take it out after the two hours. Once your chilies are ready, place them inside a blender. Then add one chipotle chili in adobo sauce, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon, 1 8 teaspoon of ground cloves, 1 teaspoon of cumin, 1 4th teaspoon of sugar, 1 half teaspoon of black pepper, 1 4th teaspoon of smoked paprika, 1 8 teaspoon of cayenne pepper, 1 8 teaspoon of ground ginger, and 1 8 teaspoon of ground coriander. Strain in the cup of broth we set to the side earlier. Now blend everything together until smooth. Once your sauce is finished, the two hours should be up so you can go ahead and strain your sauce into your pot.
Now mix everything together until well combined. Next, let your broth simmer for about 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes is up, remove your meat. By the way, don't forget to disregard of the two bay leaves. Next, skim the fat from the top of your broth, place it in a bowl, and set it to the side. We're going to use that later to cook our tacos. Now chop up your beef. Once you've finished chopping up your beef, add some of it back into your broth. Next, you're going to take the second onion that you diced before and place it in a bowl. Then add some of your cilantro into the bowl and mix everything together. When you're finished, set it to the side. Now that our ingredients are ready, we can go ahead and start assembling our tacos and our burritos. We're going to begin by making our burritos. Add mozzarella cheese to the center of a large flour tortilla. Then add your meat. After that, add some rice. your onions and cilantro, some guacamole, and some pico de gallo. Once you finish adding your ingredients to your burrito, it's time to fold it all together. Fold the sides of your tortilla in, then take the back of it and fold it over, and then pinch everything together and roll it. Make sure to keep the ingredients inside your tortilla. If necessary, push everything inside while you're rolling it. When you finish making a burrito, set it to the side. In a large pan over medium heat, add some olive oil. Then add the fat from the broth that we saved before onto a plate. Then coat your burrito in it. Place your burrito on the pan and let it cook on each side until golden brown. Once it is finished cooking, take it off the heat. This is what the inside looks like and it looks beautiful. It smelled delicious and it tasted even better. Now we're going to make our tacos. Dip a corn tortilla in the fat, then place it on the pan. Make sure each side is coated well in the rendered fat.
Then add your mozzarella cheese. your meat, and finally your onions and cilantro. Fold your taco in half and let it cook on both sides until each side is crispy. Now it's time to plate everything up. And this is the finished product. It looks absolutely amazing! I especially like the burrito. It was really, really good. The broth was really, really flavorful, so I'm really glad I added some extra spices. I think I added a bit too much of the meat in the broth, though, so I think that's the only thing I would change. Overall, I'm really glad everything came out so well. I hope this video was helpful. In my last video, I got a lot of comments from people saying that they didn't have an instant pot or a crock pot. So with this video, you'll be able to make it on the stove and it'll be just as good. The recipe is still fairly simple and easy to make. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make birria quesadillas. I was craving some birria and decided to make quesadillas this time, so let's get started with the video. Begin by prepping your ingredients. Dice two onions. Then chop one carrot. and some fresh cilantro. After that, shred some fresh mozzarella cheese. And finally, remove the seeds and stem of three wahilo chilies, one ancho chili, and one pasilla chili.
When you finish removing the seeds and stem, give them a quick rinse. Next, place your chilies into a pot of water. Bring your pot of water to a boil and when it starts boiling, take it off the heat, cover your pot with a lid, and let your chili stew for 20 minutes or more. After that, place your chilies inside a blender. Then add one chipotle pepper in adobo sauce and one cup of water. Now blend all your ingredients together until smooth. When you're finished blending, strain your chili mixture. When you're finished, set your mixture to the side. On an instant pot, press saute and continue to press saute until it is on more. Then add about one to two tablespoons of vegetable oil inside your instant pot. Once the inside is hot, sear about three pounds of beef shanks on each side for about a minute. When you finish searing your beef, set them to the side. The bottom was burning a bit, so I had to wipe the pot clean. After searing your meat, let your instant pot cool and then place your meat back into the pot. Then add one onion, diced or whole, your chopped carrot, your chili mixture from before, Two to three tablespoons of minced garlic, two tablespoons of beef bouillon powder, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of cumin, one fourth teaspoon smoked paprika, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, 1 4th teaspoon of sugar, 1 8th teaspoon ground cloves, 1 8th teaspoon ground ginger, 1 8th teaspoon cayenne pepper, and 1 8th teaspoon ground coriander. After you've added all your seasonings, add 3 bay leaves and 4 cups of water. Then place the lid on your Instant Pot. Then all you have to do is press meat stew on your Instant Pot and wait for everything to finish cooking. It'll take about 10 minutes for it to warm up and then 35 minutes to cook. Once it's finished cooking, release the steam from the vent and take the lid off. Do not open the lid until all the steam has been released. Now take the beef out of your Instant Pot and place it on a cutting board. The beef is gonna be really tender so it's gonna fall apart easily so it might be a bit difficult to take it out all at once, you might have to take them out in pieces. Next, take out your bay leaves and skim the fat from the top of your broth. Don't throw that away, we're gonna use that to make our quesadillas and tacos.
When you're finished, chop up your beef. Now add some of the beef back into the broth. Next, in a small bowl, add some of your diced onions. Then add some of your finely chopped cilantro and mix the onions and cilantro together. When you're finished, set your onion and cilantro mixture to the side. This part's optional, but I decided to make some pico to go with the quesadillas. Dice three Roma tomatoes and place it in a bowl. Then add half of a diced onion, some cilantro, the juice of two limes, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Then mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your pico de gallo to the side. Now we're going to make our quesadillas. In a large pan over medium heat, add some spoonfuls of your rendered fat from your broth. Then place a large tortilla in the pan and coat both sides with the rendered fat. Let your tortilla cook for about a minute or so, and then add your mozzarella cheese, your beef, and some of your cilantro and onions. Then fold your tortilla. Cook your tortilla on both sides until crispy, and then take it out of the pan. I decided to make another quesadilla because I didn't think I put enough cheese on the other one. Once you're finished cooking your quesadillas, place them on a cutting board and slice them into three even pieces. After I made the quesadillas, I decided to make some tacos to go with them as well. I basically just used the same method I used for the quesadilla. I dipped the tortilla in rendered fat and then coated both sides. Let the tortilla cook for a bit. Added cheese. beef, and onions and cilantro, then folded the taco and cooked both sides until crispy.
Now that we've finished cooking everything, we can go ahead and plate everything up. And this is the finished result. These were great, it totally satisfied my craving. The pico de gallo tastes amazing with it as well. I totally recommend you give it a try with some pico. If you don't have an instant pot, that's totally fine, I have a video on how to make birria tacos on the stove. I'll have a link to it at the end of the video and in the description below. Oh, and I also want to address some comments that I got on my previous birria taco videos. A lot of people were asking if it's spicy, it's not spicy, the broth isn't spicy either. It's very mild and the only thing that would make it spicy is if you added some hot sauce. Oh that reminds me, I added some tapatio on it too and it tasted great! Alright that's it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make some delicious birria egg rolls. So let's get started with the video. Begin by prepping your ingredients. Dice two onions. Peel and chop one carrot. Finally chop some cilantro and remove the stem and seeds from 3 wajillo chilies, 1 basilla chili, and 1 ancho chili. After removing the stem and seeds, rinse your chilies off and set them to the side. Next, shred some fresh mozzarella cheese. When you're finished, set your mozzarella cheese to the side. Next, we're going to make our seasoning mix. In a small bowl, add one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of cumin, one fourth teaspoon of sugar, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon smoked paprika, one eighth teaspoon ground cloves, one eighth teaspoon cayenne pepper, one eighth teaspoon ginger, one eighth teaspoon ground coriander, 1 teaspoon of thyme, and 2 teaspoons of Mexican oregano. Mix everything together until well combined, and then set your seasonings to the side. Once you have finished preparing your ingredients, you can start cooking. In a pot of water, add your chilies. Bring the pot to a boil and then remove it from the heat. Place a lid on top and then let your chili stew for about 20 minutes or more. After you let your chili stew, place them inside a blender. Then add one chipotle pepper in adobo sauce and one cup of water. Then blend until smooth. When you're finished blending, pour your chili mixture through a fine mesh strainer.
When you're finished draining your chili mixture, set it to the side. Next, cut around 3 pounds of chuck roast into pieces. After cutting your chuck roast, set your Instant Pot to saute. Then add 2 tablespoons of vegetable oil in the pot. Once the pot is hot, sear the meat for about 1-2 to two minutes on each side. When you finish searing, turn off the heat and place your meat back into the pot. Next, add one diced onion, one chopped carrot, two tablespoons of minced garlic, your chili mixture, two tablespoons of beef bouillon powder, your seasoning mix, 4 cups of water, and 3 bay leaves. Once you've added all your ingredients, close the lid and set your Instant Pot to beef stew. Once everything has finished cooking, unseal the vent and wait until all the steam has been released. Then open the lid. Take the chuck roast out of the pot and place it on a cutting board. Also make sure to remove the bay leaves. Next remove the fat. Don't throw it away though, you could totally use it to make some tacos cause that's what I did. Next, chop and shred your beef. When you're finished, add your beef back into the broth. Let the beef soak in the broth for a while, this is going to make it really juicy. Take the beef out when you're ready to make your egg rolls. Next, lay out an egg roll wrapper. Then add about a handful of shredded mozzarella cheese, about two scoops of shredded beef, some onions, and a bit of cilantro. Next, brush the edges of your egg roll wrapper with water. Then, take both vertical ends of your egg roll wrapper and place them together at the center. Then fold the horizontal end of your egg roll to the center as well. Tuck and tightly roll your egg roll once. The rest of your egg roll should look like a triangle. Brush the triangle end of your egg roll with water and then continue to roll your egg roll. And that's it, you've finished making your egg roll. Now repeat this process until you've made all the egg rolls that you want.
When you have finished making your egg rolls, you can begin frying them. In a pot or deep fryer, add vegetable oil. Then heat the oil up to around 350 degrees. Next, fry your egg rolls for about 3 to 5 minutes or until golden brown. Once your egg rolls have finished frying, take them out and place them on a wire rack. Repeat this process until you've fried all of your egg rolls. Once you've finished frying your egg rolls, plate it up and enjoy! And this is the finished result! These were awesome! Oh, and listen to the crunch. The cheese pull and the crunch were a 10 out of 10. The egg rolls were crispy and cheesy and the beef was so juicy. Dipping the egg rolls in the broth is good, but let me recommend dipping it in avocado ranch. It tastes great with the egg rolls. These also taste good with tapatio hot sauce. That hot sauce is the best. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed because I enjoyed making and eating these egg rolls. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the viral TikTok Trader Joe's Birria Pizza. So let's get started with the video. Begin by cooking the Trader Joe's Beef Birria. To cook the birria, you have to let it thaw overnight, so make sure to do that before you begin cooking. Once the birria is thawed, you can begin cooking it. There are two ways you can cook it. You can either microwave it or cook it on the stove. I prefer to cook it on the stove. After removing the outer packaging and the film, pour the birria into a medium-sized pot or pan. Okay look, I know it looks questionable at first, but I swear after you heat it up and cook it, it looks and tastes delicious. Next, bring it to a boil over medium heat. Let the beef cook for a few minutes and then, once it's hot and ready, remove it from the pan. After removing the beef from the pan, reduce the heat to low. Next, place the beef on a cutting board and chop it into pieces. When you're finished, place the beef back into the pan. Once you've added the beef, mix it in with the broth and then take the birria off the heat and set it to the side. Next, take a Trader Joe's flatbread pizza crust and place it on a tinfoil lined baking sheet. Then coat the flatbread in a bit of olive oil. When you're finished, brush the broth from the birria onto the flatbread. Brush a good amount of the broth, but not so much that it becomes soggy.
When you're finished, add shredded mozzarella cheese. Next, add the beef on top. Then add a bit more mozzarella cheese. And some diced red onions. When you're done, place the pizza into the oven at 425 degrees for 10 minutes. Once the pizza is finished cooking, add cilantro and sliced jalapenos on top. And that's it! You are all finished making your birria pizza. All you have to do now is slice it up and enjoy. This pizza was absolutely delicious, especially if you put jalapenos on it. The jalapenos kick it up a notch. I totally recommend giving this a try. It's easy to make and it tastes great. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this super easy and delicious birria ramen. So let's get started with the video. For this recipe, get your favorite pack of instant ramen noodles. I'm going to be using Shen Ramen. Now, set your ramen aside until you're ready to use it. Next, get one package of Trader Joe's Beef Birria. Then, remove the outer packaging and carefully puncture the film with a fork or a knife. Next, place the birria in the microwave on high for two and a half minutes. Next, carefully remove the film and stir the birria. When you're done, place it back in the microwave and heat it for another two and a half minutes. Next, pour the birria into a medium sized saucepan or pot over medium heat. Cook the beef for a few minutes and then take it out of the saucepan. Once you remove the beef from the saucepan, place it on a cutting board and shred it. Once you're finished shredding the beef, set it to the side until you're ready to use it later. Next, add 2 cups of chicken broth to the birria broth. Then add the Shin Ramen flavoring packet and the vegetable packet. Mix everything together until well combined and then bring the broth to a boil. Next, add the ramen noodles and reduce the broth to a simmer. Then, cook the ramen noodles for however long it says to on the package. Once the noodles have finished cooking, pour the ramen into a bowl. Then, add some shredded mozzarella cheese on top. The shredded beef you prepared before. some diced onions, some sliced jalapenos, a sprinkle of freshly chopped cilantro, and the wedge of a lime. And this is the finished result! This birria rama was absolutely delicious. Combining the Shin Ramen flavoring packet with the birria gives the broth a really nice flavor, so I definitely recommend giving this a try. It's also super easy to make and really filling. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!